Hi, I'm Adam, an intern at Planet Football and Copper 90. As part of a scheme initiated by EA Sports aimed at increasing diversity within sports media, I've had the chance to work on a project celebrating and highlighting the stories of British Asians within football. After all, what football means to us is what football means to anyone else. A passion, a hobby, an escape, an important part of our lives. And often, the narrative is one that questions the lack of British Asians within football. And rightfully so. Despite making up 7% of the British population, just 0.25% of professional footballers come from a British Asian background. But let us celebrate the success stories that do exist, be it players, coaches or presenters, to show that we can make it and to hopefully use these conversations to act as an inspiration. I've spoken with Hamza Chowdhury, midfielder at Leicester City, Mas Pacheco, defender at Aston Villa, Anwar Rudin, the assistant manager at Aldershot Town, Manisha Taylor, the assistant head of coaching at QPR, and Seema Jazal, the presenter of the UEFA Champions League on BT Sport. We've discussed a wide spectrum of topics ranging from what football means to them to their journeys and experiences within the game. So enough of me, and let's take a look at what they had to say. Families, yeah. parents should, should push their kids to go out and, and do what they enjoy and, and support them. But I think for me, it's, it's, it's going, it's, it's changing the mindset of everyone. It's not just the Asian community, it's not just the scouts, it's not just, you know, people who watch football hanging with them. We need to change the mindset. I think there might have been, or well, definitely there was like a, a, a racial bias that went on, maybe subconscious, yeah. maybe consciously, you know, of mm -hmm. scouts and whatnot. They wouldn't go and, and watch these games because really, yeah. at the end of the day, football is, is sort of a business for them, you know, they yeah. uh, bring players in and if they've not had any successful British Asians, before then they will almost wouldn't go and waste their time watching it, you know. So I think it's the mindset that we need to change, the mind frame that we are changing, I think, that is changing uh, day by day. I know one of the biggest struggles is accessibility. So it's kind of how can we make it easier for girls to get involved, especially of Asian heritage, because sometimes it's not the first thought for girls to play football, especially in culture scenarios. So how do we then change that mindset into that they can make a career and they can push and still do well and still study? Because I know education, especially in my culture, is a massive thing. Yeah. So then how can we then marry the two is kind of something I want to showcase. Like, I think especially with my journey, I've shown that you can still have an education and still make it pro. I think it's much better now. I think it is... Um... And I think that's because there's an influx of players from around the world. Mm -hmm. I think there's an influx of Muslim players, Jewish players. I think there's more people involved in the game. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that kind of improves diversity of thought, diversity of practice. You know, when I started coming through, predominantly most players were from England. You might have had some black boys from Scotland, Ireland, Wales. Now it's a different game. And I think with difference comes understanding. And I think that's massively important. So I think that what, what's happening now is, is, is great. And, and it's what's needed at the moment. And that's the fact that governing bodies and clubs are being held more to account. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that when, when we've got uh, codes and quotas, um, it, it, it cannot be optional because the moment you make it optional, it gives people the choice to opt out. Mm -hmm. what, what we have to do is to be, I think, um, we, we have to be very measured in the way in which these the, 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 the targets are given to clubs, because you may have clubs in a demographic that is predominantly white. You know, there has to be something generic. Mm -hmm. Then it has to be a case of let's look at it club by club. Let's look at the demographic. If you have a club that's within a demographic that is multi diverse, but your staff are predominantly white, then you have to ask questions. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is to not let other people's, I think I said this before, don't let other people's obstacles become your own. If you want to go down this path, then do it. There will be a lot of noise and there'll be people that might say you can't do it or you can't do it for many different reasons. But those reasons are their reasons, not your reasons. So if you are so focused on wanting to do it, then focus on it and back yourself. Because if you don't believe you can do it, then nobody else will. I never really, before I met, probably made my debut or made my first few appearances, thought about it of sort of being like um, mm -hmm. a role model or, or someone, some, someone like people look up to in the Asian community. Um, I think for me, it was always just about being a footballer, but obviously 
once that happened and a lot of messages started to come through and, and I read a lot of people's stories and people have told me about their, their sort of journey in football. This sort of opened my eyes to maybe I was a bit uh, naive to just go in and think I was the same as everyone else and, and whatnot. So to get all them nice messages, it's the best, you know, it makes me want to work harder and it makes me want to achieve more. But yeah, I think it's, it's, it's a great importance for people to be able to see, you know, I think playing in the Premier League obviously offers that because it's showed worldwide and obviously it's what all the kids want to watch. Um, but um, I think it's, it's, it's so important to be able to see, to make a connection with someone, sort of feel like it's not impossible. Um, I feel like with the Asian community, there's a lot of, it doesn't feel like it can happen to people don't give it their all, you know, sort yeah. of uh, not giving themselves a chance. Um, so hopefully... Hopefully that can be the first of many and, and, and the first of a, of a big change and a big sort of start of Asian football is getting into the professional game. It's kind of worrying. It's exciting, but it's kind of worrying at the same time because you're always like, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing a good job? Um, but for me, like this year, the deal with Sky Sports that the league has is it's massive. Being a role model has its responsibilities, has its pressure, but at the same time, I feel like I enjoy it because it means that I'm doing something good and the game's growing into into where we want it to grow. So, yeah, I enjoy it. The amount of Asian parents that are messaging me on Instagram, and I'm like well impressed thinking my mum and dad wouldn't have a clue how to message on Instagram, but there are a lot of Asian parents out there that are messaging saying, look, our daughters or our sons have seen you and they're so inspired by what you're doing. How yeah. did you get to it? What was it that your parents, someone actually only yesterday asked me, what was it that your parents did when you were growing up? Did they encourage you? Was it always something you wanted to do? And it's so nice because I, this is like, so, I get so many messages um, asking these questions. And I think it's so important that um, I, I like to think that I will treat every single message with, as much love as I can and give as much advice to those people reaching out to me and I think that's my responsibility now and I want to be able to impart what I've experienced on people I think visibility is key so the fact that I am in my position to talk about it is really really important if there are no role models we need role models so I was happy to inspire people around me the next generation and just people who are like me not in the football industry but just generally mm -hmm. because there was a lot of negativity around the south asian community in east london not even about you know life it was about integration it was about careers it was about opportunities you know there's a lot of negativity a lot of um you know, it was hardship in the east end of london because where i grew up in east end of london it was traditionally a, a white working class area which transitioned into a predominantly Asian area. And I lived through that transition. Um, and I just thought it was important that, to give people the, the realization that, listen, yeah, we're from a South Asian community, but there's no, there's nothing we can't do if we set our mind to it and if it's something that we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it might be harder. In fact, it was harder. Yes, it might be different, but there's an opportunity. And ultimately, I always thought the cream rises to the top. And if I want to get to the top, I've got to be among one of the better players. Women's football has only just started to evolve. Um, we, we're seeing more and more role models from the South Asian community now on and off the pitch, which I think is great. Um, and particularly represented now within the professional game. I'm not saying it's perfect, but we do have a lot more role models and visibility than we ever had before. That didn't exist in, in the 80s or the 90s. So when I was growing up, I soon realized that a playing career was not going to be in my pathway. One, because there were few pathways for, for girls to play. Where was I gonna play? I played for my school team. I went on trial to Barnet. And as much as I had a great time and I got in, it needed commitment from my family for somebody to take me to training and to the games. And for my mum, with a lack of role modeling, she didn't see yeah. South Asian females playing football. At Stockley Park, at the Premier League, our coverage that goes out around the world, you'll be surprised at that there are so many females. There's a lot of diversity. There is, I feel like I entered the industry at a time of change. Yes, not many Asians, not many Asians presenting, but there, there is a lot of diversity, whether, I, whether I've got female presenters there very regularly. You look at a call sheet on any given day and I'll see probably a balance of male and female presenters. And that's mirrored behind the scenes in production um the floor managers 
um, sound assistants, camera ops. I think I've been quite lucky in that possibly before me, during the likes of Gabby Logan's time or Claire Balding or any, Hazel Irvin, who I yeah. absolutely love because I present the snooker with her, you wouldn't have seen diversity. You definitely wouldn't have seen any Asians presenting sport. I don't remember any anyway. Um, but suddenly when I've entered it, I think there's been that real push for change. Yeah. And I've been part of that. I don't think I felt like I was this Asian girl trying to make it because there was so much coming my way. But that's credit to those before me. Um, even like the likes of Reshman and people, you know, Reshman Chadwin, other Asians, there were few Asians, but those that had really possibly broken down barriers for people like me to step in. Um, am I seeing lots of Asian presenters and would I love to see more? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. absolutely 100 percent. but anyway a good example is Manish Manish Brasin he's another Asian yeah. guy at, at the Premier League so it's like he was the main guy there he mm -hmm. still is along with Steve Bauer and myself um so I think I was quite lucky that I didn't go through that period I've entered during that real period of push for change for my family it was it was the first sort of experience in any sort of professional sport even at such a young age but I think honestly without them I wouldn't be where I was or anywhere near it. Uh, the, the most supportive family I've met, and like you see from the video, not just family, as in like family, friends, and and even distant relatives. But I think we're we're really we're a really close family in general. Uh, I feel like anything any of us want to do, we sort of hundred percent back them and support them and, and want them to do well. So people say, oh, you know, a, a stereotypical Asian parent would be pushing towards an academic career. Mm -hmm. That's what always made me laugh a little bit, to be honest, because is that not a stereotypical good parent? Because yeah. surely every parent would want you to do well in school. I mean, I, I had a career in football, but I did so well in school, always and B's, and because I think you can do both. I, mm -hmm. You know, just because you're a football player doesn't mean you give up on education. Yeah, I think my mum is quite a driven driven person and her personality I think is kind of rubbed off on me she's mm -hmm. very much an independent woman single mom so kind of having that background and growing up in that environment just made me want to achieve the dreams that I had and she was always pushing me to dream bigger than what I always wanted so and still to this day she's always like you haven't achieved your goal yet keep climbing keep pushing so you can imagine you know the Asian pressure of keep wanting to do better and making sure making sure you're at the top of your game. So, you know, when I moved to Villa, she was like, keep in mind your goal. Cause obviously my goal one day is to break into the seniors. So, you know, for me to move here, it's kind of, can I hit the ground running and make, yeah. make a statement. So it's definitely, definitely big ambitions for me that she keeps pushing. Anything is possible, but I just sometimes don't think families or people realize just how hard it is. Yeah. If we want to be a professional football player, it will have an impact on you, your parents, your brothers, your sisters, and your extended family. That mm -hmm. is a fact. I just appreciate all the good messages that come with it, really. Uh, yeah. I've never really had any bad ones from there, from, from like, I don't know, I guess the Asian community, whether I've had a bad, bad performance and whatnot. People always tell me how bad they are. So for me, it's sort of uh, another sort of comfort blanket to know that they're all supporting me. And, and like I said, it makes me sort of want to achieve more. Uh, everything really. I think it's been obviously such a, a prominent thing in my life from the age of, of six, five, six years old. So, so I can't imagine my life without it really. Obviously brings so much happiness to me and my family and to millions around the world. And it's just something that I don't know that is obviously a part of my everyday life, but when I'm not at work I enjoy watching it and talking about yeah. it and whatnot. So yeah, it's massive for me. Well, to be honest, it's been everything in my life. Um, it's something that I obviously concentrated on as a kid. It's all that I did in the East End of London, practically because there wasn't much else to do. And it sort of consumed my everyday life as, as a kid. And obviously going into the academy at West Ham from the age of 13. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm 37 now and I'm still managing in the National League. So I've played, I've coached, I've managed. And as a manager, as a player, the coach uh, as, as an aspiring player so yeah it's, it's everything to me uh, I've enjoyed it I've kind of absorbed every single ounce of the game and obviously now I, I work in the governance side of it as well so there's not many people you know take away the 
the British Asian perspective, there's not actually many people that have seen the game through as many perspectives as I have. I think it pretty much means everything to me because it's my life. I like live and breathe it. And now with the Champions League, I literally <laughs> live and breathe it. And it's amazing. I mean, it's given me so many opportunities in my life to, to be part of World Cup and Euros and host these events and host major shows, be pitch side for some of the England games and host these amazing tournaments. It's just, it means the world to me. Well, it's kind of cliche, but I say it means everything. I think from the moment I can remember, I've always had a ball at my feet and it's something that I've not only had to sacrifice, but my family, I've had to sacrifice things to make me be in the position that I'm in. So it's kind of, football is my way of giving back to them, showing them that it was worth their time, it was worth their energy to take me to and from training, to, to help me get to games, to make sure I'm on time to things. So it's kind of, for me, I just want to make my family proud, but then I also want to inspire the next generation. And like you said, get more Asians involved in football and show there is a career path and just trying to pave the way for the next generation, just like those above me have. So there we have it, five inspiring stories, five fascinating individuals and five shining examples of British Asians in football. It's not easy at all, but then again, nothing is. But what Hamza, Maz, Anwar, Manisha and Seema have shown is that not only is it possible to create a career within football and sport, but it's also possible to thrive within their respective professions. And the fact that we've been able to make this alone goes to showcase the limitless possibilities that are out there. If they can do it, then so can you.